Okay, again, we're, we're stealing uh, pictures off the internet. Uh, again, the, the most important thing is we're looking for pictures that are a specific size. And I wanted this for a high definition TV, which is 1920 by 1080. To find a specific size inside of Google Images, I type in a word in Google, go to Images, Search Tools, right here. And then right here on the pull down menu right here is where you can put in the sizes you want or if you want an exact size since we're doing high definition we can put in the 1920 by 1080 size we hit go and it should give us a bunch of images that we could use that are in the proper size if I roll my mouse over it will actually tell you the d dimensions right there if I click on a picture it will take us to the full version of the picture not just a thumbnail and if I want to steal this picture on a Windows operating system, I can, in Firefox browser, I can right click on there and I can go to where it says Save Image As. Using the Save Image As, I can then go to a folder that's on my computer. In this case, my folder is on my desktop. And my, I've made a folder on the desktop with my name on it. And here it is called My Folder. I can go Desktop, My Folder and then I can keep the name if I want or I can change the name of this picture if I want it might be better to change it so you know what it is it says cocktail summer wallpaper but um, how about if I just call it drink cock or just drink one how about that so you can change the name you don't have to use the exact name that was on the internet file in fact you might want to change it that way you know you put it somewhere they don't know where you stole it from right hey, it's always good Okay, now that we have a folder with a bunch of files in it, let's quit the browser. To quit a program, of course, you can always go underneath the file exit, file exit in the upper corner. So I'm going to quit Firefox right now. To quit Firefox, I'm going to file exit. And again, I have this folder on the desktop right here. Okay, so if I open up that folder, it'll show me a group of pictures that I've downloaded off the internet. Let's talk about how we can organize our files in our folder. Again, double click on your folder to open it up. Once it has been opened right here, one of the things you'll notice in Windows 7, again, I'm using the Windows 7 operating system, you have the common places on your computer. Let's talk about them. Of course, over here is my favorites. You got your desktop. Now, if I download things by just clicking on them, not using the right click, but if I'm on the internet and I click on download, it's most likely going to go into the downloads folder. And we'll be doing that a lot in this class, downloads. You also have recent places, which will give you recent folders that you've used. Inside the library, you'll notice there's a variety of places where you can store files on your computer. Uh, primarily there's a documents folder to store common documents that you would have on your computer there's also a music folder that you can store music in uh, you know you can put music anywhere you want on your computer you can put files anywhere you want in your computer they don't specifically have to be in these folders but you know the operating system is making it easy for you to hey there's a music folder why don't you put your music in there hey it looks good and if you're using a certain application like let's say a music application or you're using a picture application or something like that it defaults to these folders right if I'm doing a video most likely it's going to default to the video folder so that's why they're there and that's why they have them there and of course these are the hard drive right here and uh, we really can't mess with the hard drive they probably locked us out to doing anything on these computers because hey they're system administrators and they like to lock you out of anything you do and then of course if there's a network places you can network but right now what we want to do is we want to organize our files right now it's showing me what we call thumbnail view thumbnail view if you come up here to the very top you can change the way that the thumbnails look so again I'm looking at the Windows 7 operating system you'll notice there is a folder up here kinda looks like a little picture in the upper right corner of this of this uh, window if you click on that it'll show you if you want to see big thumbnails you can click on big ones hey it shows you a big thumbnail of the photo you have on there you want smaller ones you can go down to smaller you want tiny you go all the way down to tiny you want list view detail view tile view or content view now these are the ways that you can view so these are the ways that you can organize the files within your folder again you can scroll I tend to like the the details view um, it shows you what file format these are all JPEGs because we found them on the internet right 
JPEG is a common full file format that you would look, right? Tells you what day and time that you downloaded it or saved it on your computer, right? So there's a lot of useful features inside there. Shows you what size you might need to move your window over. You'll notice if I put my cursor, and I've changed my window a little bit, I can make my window bigger or smaller by putting my cursor in the lower right corner. Bigger, smaller, bigger, smaller. You can organize the way you can look at these by putting your cursor along where it says name, date, type, size, tags. You can put your cursor between the two and drag left, right, see more, see less, see more, see less. You can organize things by name, up or down, you know, does it go from a to B or B to A, so you can change that around. So there's a whole bunch of different ways to view and organize your folders. I think, you know, really what it really comes down to is is which way do you like to view your pictures? Some people like the thumbnails. You want to go back to thumbnails, you'll see a little picture. Hey, this was the default one, wasn't it? The large icon, was that what it was on? No, oh, jeez. No. No. Something like that, wasn't it? I think the detail one is nice because it shows you the time and date. I actually need to search a lot for, for photos I've taken and sometimes I know the exact date that I took it and I can go and I search on that. So we'll learn how to find files. Another thing you can do is if I want to view these pictures, right? You want to show your friends, hey look at these great photos I got, how can I show them? Preview, right? Preview. So we want to select all these pictures and open them up and preview and play them in what we call a slideshow view, slideshow view. So to open up all these pictures and preview them in what we call slideshow view, I'm going to select all of them. Let's use our, some of our keyboard commands that we've learned. We haven't learned them yet, but we're going to learn them right now. So to select, select all the files, we go command, control A, control A. Oh, that didn't work, did it? Control A, there we go. We've got to click on the window first. So if you don't have your window selected, click on it again. Click on your window, click on the window, hit control A, there we go, select all, A stands for all, select all. Once they're all selected, you're going to double click on one of them, double click on one of them with the mouse, left mouse twice. Oh, it only opened up one, didn't it? Oh well, no, it goes through them all. Okay. This is picture viewer. See the little preview right here? See the little, um, I can scroll, scroll through them fast as you can click. Who can click faster than me? Come on, let me see how fast you can click. If you want to view them in a slideshow mode, the little picture in the very middle right here, see the little picture right there? If you click on that, boom, it'll go into slideshow view. And you can just sit back and watch them. There we go. Just sit back and watch them go. Isn't that nice? And look at the quality. It looks pretty good. Why does the quality look good? Because we chose the size. You should really keep that in mind. Don't just go to the internet and steal some pictures. Hey, this would be great for my thing. Think about the size and what you want to do with the photo before you download it. You know, don't don't just randomly download pictures. I see, you know, I see my kids doing that all the time. I have a 16-year-old who does a bunch of stuff in in his high school, and oh, we have to, they had to make a video for their their AP history, world history class, and they had to do a video on like um, I don't know, Leonardo da Vinci or something like that. And they're they're down there downloading pictures of da Vinci and everything, and then they put it into the video editing application. It's all pixelated and it's all blurry. I'm like, what what size did you download that? And they're like, oh, I don't know. And I'm like. No? Think about it before you go and, and do that, okay? Think about size. You might not know what size you want, but maybe get a bigger one than the dimensions you want, right? Okay, if I got slideshow. Hey, the famous key to get out of doing anything on the computer is what in the upper left corner? Escape. Escape. There we go. Woo, we're back to normal. Not too bad, not too bad. Okay, you guys all probably know how to do all these things I just showed you. I'm sorry, but hey, it's part of the curriculum. I'm going through it. If you want to rotate your picture, right, you got these little rotating things right here. See them? You, you don't like this picture this way? Hey, let's rotate it. There we go. Hey, there's the way the world should be sometimes, hey, especially after I drank that cocktail. Hey, there it is. Looks like that. Yeah, you go through another one. Here we go. 
There we go. Oh, no, there, let's keep that one straight up. There we go. Here, after the cocktail. There we go. Or this one. There we go. There we go. Now let's look at the slideshow. There. Whoosh. Upside down. Right side up. Oof, I'm going to get dizzy looking at this one. There's the cocktail that made it dizzy. There it is. Okay, escape again. Okay, let's close this picture viewer. Now, even though I have a folder right here, I have a folder with a bunch of pictures in it, uh, I'd like to organize my folder, okay, so it's a little organized. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a folder inside of a folder, and we're going to call it Photos, and we're going to take and put our photos into that folder. Does that make any sense? Do you know what I'm trying to say? You guys all have to organize your own files on your computer, right? I hope you do. And don't just randomly throw them on the desktop. Yes? Yeah, I do that with, uh, with iTunes. Like, if I don't want it in the, the software with iTunes, I create a new folder and put all the songs in there just like try to organize it by artist. There you go. And you can have each 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 album have its own 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 folder. That way it's organized. Yeah. Yeah. We'll learn how to use iTunes when we get to Mac. Yes? Yeah, I had a quick question. If all of these pictures are the same pixel resolution, then why do they have different sizes? Mm. Like if you go into like the uh, Oh you mean megabyte sizes? Kilobyte sizes? Yeah. Um well the way the things are compressed could be differently. Okay, so when, when we're talking a JPEG, the, this is a, a JPEG file, and we didn't really talk about what JPEG is, but there's a variety of image folders, right? Image file formats. The most common is called JPEG. Okay. JPEG is a very old format. Okay, it stands for Joint Picture Expert Group. That's on the test, so remember that one. JPEG. Joint Picture Expert Group. J O I N T is joint expert or expert? No, joint, joint, joint picture, P I C T U R E, expert, E X P E R T, group, G R O U P, joint picture expert group. Now, a JPEG is a what we call a compressed file. So think about it. Let, let's talk a little history of the internet. I know we all kind of live with high-speed internet today, but back in the early days of the internet, we had dial-up modems. What we call dial-up modems, and they used to connect to your phone line, and it was like slow, whoosh, slow. Whoosh. Okay, and they used to make kind of crazy noise. We used to use a modem to connect. So. In order to look at pictures on the internet with slow internet, we used to have to really compress them. You know, and what compressing does is it removes data. Okay, and we'll learn how to do some compression. But since this is in the JPEG format, a JPEG is a compressed file. Whoever makes the JPEG can determine the amount of compression that is on the picture. You can compress it more, and it's a little blurrier, or compress it less, which is a little better. So his question was, why are they different sizes? So if we look over here at the um, detail view, right? Oh, if we can get to detail. Detail view. You'll notice you see this size over here, KB. See how it says 526 kilobytes? But some of them are 112 kilobytes. You say, well, aren't these all the same pixels, right? 1920 by 1080, right? We, they were all the same kind of pixels. But they might have been compressed differently. Okay, and what compression does is it removes data and the more you compress it, the smaller it will be. Just like an MP3, right? You guys all listen to your music on your, on your computer, right? MP3. You probably have some MP3s that don't sound very good, do they? Okay. You know, and some sound really good. Somebody might have compressed that sound more than they less compressed. Okay, so that's probably why the sizes are different, even though they're the same dimension. Somebody might, or, and plus the image itself, if it has the same color, it doesn't have to compress it as much. So something that has a bunch of colors that are changing, it, needs to, it, it, it takes more data to store than it's something that's the same color. So that's probably why. This picture probably has uh, pretty much the same color throughout. Yeah, look at the blue, right? This one has a lot of blue in it. You can see them down here. Okay, so it doesn't have to store as much data because there's not a lot of things that are changing in there. But if something has a lot of different colors in it, which one is the biggest one? This one right here. Probably has a lot of color in it. Yeah, it, has, it probably has, was not compressed as much either. So, 
you notice here we haven't talked about size yet, but the KB, KB, big B is byte, little b will be bits. We haven't learned about that yet, but we'll learn that. Think about your Dr. Seuss, right? You remember when you used to read Dr. Seuss? Hey, big B, little b? We'll think about it that way. Big B, see how it has a big B right there? Stands for byte. When we get to a little b, it'll be bits. Big B, little b. We haven't talked about that yet, but that's where the size is. Killa, kilobytes, kilobytes. K stands for kilobytes, kilobytes. We'll learn about that in the future. But thank you for that question. It led me into teaching some very good stuff. So ask me more as we go along. But that's probably why, the compression. Okay, let's organize our folder. If you want, you want me to go back to thumbnail view? I can go back to thumbnail view. There we go. So again, we're going to make a folder inside of here and put our pictures in it. So again, the best way to make a folder is to right click. So inside my folder, I'm going to right click and I'm going to say new folder, new folder. And let's call it photos, P-H-O-T-O-S, photos. So I made a folder, called it photos. Next, I'm going to drag my pictures into that folder. So again, I right clicked made a folder. I'm going to drag my pictures just by clicking on the left mouse and dragging them in. Left mouse click drag into. Drag right on top of the folder. Left click drag right on top of the folder. Left click drag on top of my folder. If I want to select more than one at a time I can hold down the shift key. If I want to sh click on one but not the one in the middle so let's try this again here. So if I click on this one and I want this one, and if I want to select all three of these, I can hold the shift key down and click on there and it selects all three of them. But what if I want to select this one and this one, but not this one? Well, another way might be to use the option key. If I click on this one, hold down the option key and click on this one. Oh, not option, what is it? Control key maybe? Yeah, control key. Sorry, I'm getting confused with the Mac operating system. So if I hold down the control key, so let me do this again. If I want to select this picture, <coughs> but not this one, and this one, I'm going to hold the control key down and click. It clicks on both of these. If I want to click on this one, this one, and this one, I can hold the shift key down. If I click on this one, I hold the shift key down and click on this one, I'll select all the ones in between. See that? Another way to select all the pictures is to hold the left mouse down and draw a box. Notice how I get this box. It's kind of a, it's called a selection box. See that? If I hold the left mouse down, I can click on a group of pictures. See that? Left mouse, click on a group, <coughs> and then I can drag into the folder. Wow. Fabulous. If I want to delete, or duplicate, I'm sorry, not delete yet. If I want to duplicate this folder of photos so I have two of them, you will hold down the option, click and drag. Oh, not option, I'm sorry, control, click and drag. I get my Mac and Windows confused. Hold down the control key and click on that folder and drag just to the right. It'll duplicate it. <laughs> I duplicate things all the time. Quick way to duplicate something, control, click and drag, we'll copy it. Now two folders with the same stuff inside it. <coughs> Anybody okay? Let's delete a folder. I don't need two folders of the same thing. Hey, how do I get rid of one of them? Well, there's a couple different ways. Of course, there's a recycle bin on your desktop probably. You can drag it in there if you want. I can just simply click on it and drag it in my recycle bin right there. Boom, and it goes away. Recycle bin's like a trash can. Let me duplicate that again so I have two of them again. Okay. <coughs> Another way to, to delete it instead of dragging. Dragging's hard. That's a lot of work to click and hold the mouse down and drag over there. Especially when you get to working at a company. When you're working at a company, they want to know how long it's going to take you to do something. I, when I was... 20 years old, I got a job at that slide company I told you about. We used to make slides for slide presentations. And so before PowerPoint, we had to make slides. And my salespeople would come back say, Jeff, how long is it going to take you to make this? You know, and I had to give them an estimate. I had to, you know, how long will it take me to do things? So you want to do things quickly. Because the faster you make things, the more money they make. 
And so you learn how to do things quickly on the computer. Probably the faster way to, to delete this folder might be to, of course, hit the delete key on the keyboard. Whoosh, where did that go? Hey, that wasn't a good idea. Let's not do that. Okay, how about this? Right click on it and say send to trash or delete. There it is. Delete. Do you want to send it to the recycle bin? Yes. Boom. Try that again. Let's try it again. Right click, delete. Yes. How many megabytes does this uh, folder take, or kilobytes, or whatever? How many pictures do we have? We have like six pictures in there, right? How 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 big is this folder, right? So knowing how big a folder is might determine where you're going to send it. So let's let's right click on it and go to where it says properties. Right click on that folder again. Go to properties. Tells you how big they are. It's 22.92 megabytes. What is a megabyte? What's that? A thousand kilobytes, right? Ten thousand kilobytes. Twenty thousand kilobytes. A million kilobytes. Megabyte. Did you see all the kilobytes we had in the other one? Let's open it up again. Do you remember looking at the detail view? Oh, where was it? detail view. Oh, here we go. Kilobytes right here. So add all these up and what are we going to get? 2.92 megabytes. So a thousand kilobytes equals one megabyte. So again, let's go back again. I have a folder that has a bunch of photos in it. If I right click on it, I go to properties. 2.92 megabytes. Now in this folder, I'm not going to go through all of it. You got sharing options if you want to share this. You can give permission. How do I share? I don't know. You know, you guys are really not going to share on a group. Security. <coughs> you have all these system administrators trying to keep you from doing anything. Previous versions. Customize. Yeah. The only nice thing about the customize is you can change the icon. So in case, instead of looking at that folder with a bunch of pictures in it, right? See this folder. You can put anything you want in there. You want to put a little smiley face, you can put it on there too. Right here, which says change icon. We'll learn about how to make icons and how to change them. So we're going to learn how to make icons and how to change them a little bit later. Let's say you needed to turn these photos in for your homework assignment to your teacher. You say to your, te your teacher, says, send me six pictures of uh, the beach and put them on Angel. Angel. Oh. Six pictures. That's a lot of work. Sending six pictures. Wouldn't it be better if I could take all these pictures and put them into one file and send that one file? Right? To do that, we use zip compression. I know some of you use the RA compression. You gamers probably use the RA compression all the time, right? Who uses the RA thing, right? No? A lot of games, they're compressed as the RA compression. Primarily, we use zip compression, probably the easiest way to use it. Okay, so how do I take this folder that has six photos in it and make it into one file? We use zip compression. To do that, I'm going to right-click on my folder, and I'm going to go down to where it says, share with nobody. Send to compressed zip. That's it. Go to where it says, send to compressed folder. Send to compressed folder. If I click on that, it'll then, you'll see it, it gives you a little icon with a little thing. So now you can send that as an attachment, an email attachment, or you can post that and they're all together in one file. Okay? Much easier than having to send individual six files individually. Sending one file is much easier than sending six individual files. Now the person who receives that needs to uncompress it, but still. It's good. So let's send this to our email. So let's go. You guys all have your own email account, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Let's send it to our email. Then we'll go. We'll, we'll take a break. And when we come back, we'll, we'll do a little bit of Mac. And then we'll uncompress it on a Mac. How about that? So let's send this to our email. You all should have a Yahoo or Hotmail or Google. You all have a Gmail or something like that, right? Yeah. Okay, let's log in. I'm going to send this to myself. So I'm going to go. So I, I'd like to... 
the reason why I send things to myself all the time is so I have a storage, a copy of it, right? So I can go, I'm going to go into my email. I got a Yahoo one, so I'm going to go into my Yahoo email. Go into my Yahoo email. Hopefully it works. There we go. And I'm going to go and click on mail. I'm going to go to my Yahoo email. And I'm going to put in my password, if I can remember what it is. Got all my junk mail in there. So if I was going to send these photos to my email, you can just send it to yourself. Send it to yourself. So in my email account, in my email account, I have a compose box, right? You have a compose or whatever, make a make an email message, right? So I'm going to go to compose. I'm going to put in my same email account, JMS, the same one I logged into, same one I logged into. You can send yourself the same files. Send yourself the same files. So log in, and these are my great photos. Great photos. Notice over here it says attachment. Attachment. So I'm going to click on attachment, and I'm going to go to my browse. I'm going to go and find my compressed folder, which is inside my folder, right? Go find your compressed folder. Go find your compressed folder and attach that and attach that so I'm basically sending the same photos to myself again I logged in to my account I use the same email I'm not sending to somebody else don't send them to me send them to yourself send the pictures to yourself Just put your email address in there put yourself a little subject line hit attach photos right here Go to the operating system, find that zip file, and then send. And of course, it should show up. Oh, didn't show up yet. Oh, it's a little slow, maybe. That's right. There it is. Here's my great photo. So there's my icon for my attachment. So the, all those pictures were put into one folder. I compressed it into zip. And then I attached it in my email and put it into myself. That way I have a copy of it. Hey, it'll be in there forever until Yahoo goes out of business, of course. Or they delete me. And then I can sign out. Let's sign out. Okay. And then you can quit your browser if you want. You guys all have an idea how to send an attachment to your email? Compressed is the most important thing, though. Compressing them all is one. So let's take a little bit of break now. I don't, you know, again, we take a break every hour because, you know, if you sit here and listen to me talk for four hours every day, your, your head's going to explode. Mine will explode, too. So we take a lot of breaks. Let me take a break here. And, uh, um, okay, again, down here is called the task bar. This is called the task bar in the Windows operating system. And right here, I already have one in my taskbar called the snipping tool. I'm going to unpin this. Okay, what that means is remove it from the taskbar. Then I'm going to go and find it and put it in there. So, and you guys all do it too. I want you to put the snipping tool in your taskbar. Here's how we do it. We go to our start menu. In our start menu, you'll notice you have all your kind of access to a whole bunch of stuff. Okay, we got our Word, PowerPoint stuff here. We got our, op you know, our browsers here. Um, we have our software over here. And if you go to all programs, it'll actually show you all the programs that are on the computer. And inside the accessories, so again, I went to all programs. Inside the accessories right here, if you click on accessories, you'll notice there's a variety of them. And we're going to talk about some of them, very useful ones like the calculator, the um, notepad, the paint program, and all those ones. But the one we're looking at today is the snipping tool. If you right click on the snipping tool, you can say pin to taskbar. Again, find the snipping tool. It's under accessories, all programs, accessories. Right click on the snipping tool right here in this window and say pin to taskbar. Pin to taskbar. Boom, it'll show up down here. See if you can do that. You guys all okay? 
You got that? Good. Okay, so what is this snipping tool used for? Well, it's useful, and I primarily use it to, to take things from the internet. I like to do things like that. So let's go to the internet. I'm going to go into back to the browser. I'm going to use Firefox again. So I'm on Firefox browser. There I am in the Firefox browser. Here's the West Valley College website. And you say to yourself, wow, what a great website. This is a fabulous website. Wouldn't it be great if I could take a picture of this website and send it to my friends so that they can say, hey, I want to take a class at West Valley College. So to take a picture of the screen, or basically what we're doing is we're turning the image that you see on the screen into pixels. Remember, pixel is short for picture element. We talked about that before, right? Pixel is short for picture element. We want to take this image that we see and put it into pixels. So to do that, we're going to use the snipping tool. So I'm going to click on the one that says snipping right here. Click on it. It should open up like this. It kind of grays out the screen a little bit. See how it kind of grays it out? And what you want to do is you'll notice your cursor turns into a crosshair. And what that crosshair then will do is allow you to draw a box around what you want to take a picture of. So I usually start in the upper left corner. I always start in the upper left corner. And uh, so I'm going to start in the upper left corner. You don't have to do the menu item at the top. I'm just going to kind of start right about here. And I'm going to click and hold my left mouse down. And I'm going to drag, 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 drag all the way across the red little box. I'm going to make a red little box. And I'm going to release my mouse. And it opens up in the snipping tool kind of window. And this window then allows you to save it. Allows you to save it. So the snipping tool is quite easy to do and use. Um, there's a couple things you can do with this image if you want. Once you're in the snipping tool, you can scroll to see, hey, it's a picture, it's a picture. There's a little highlighter right here. You can highlight a certain area if you want. Ooh, the logo is cool. See that? See the little highlighter right here? And I can draw a highlight over that. Wow. There's a, there's a little eraser tool right there. You can erase the highlight if you don't like it. Again, highlighter here. There's a pencil tool here. You can draw a box around anything you want there. Ooh, that's a cool part of the screen capture. Or click on Angel. See, great for instructional. You know, a lot of what you want to do, a lot of people online, there's a lot of jobs in building instructional things on the computer. This is a great tool. You can highlight certain areas of a capture you did. Hey, click on this. Click here. Click there. Click there. It's great for instructional. When you're all done, I don't really use this email thing, send snip. It's not really going to work unless your computer's configured to send email. That doesn't really work. But what we can do is we can save it and send it as an attachment, right? To save it, you got the little, looks like a little diskette. I don't know. You guys probably don't even know what a diskette is anymore. Back in the days, we used to use these things called disk. We would save our stuff. And they think, I don't know who's uh, the, the UI person who developed this operating system or at least this program. But, you know, young kids today probably don't even know what a diskette is, right? Have you ever used a 1.4-inch floppy disk? You have? Okay, well, you know, some of us might have. Most of us haven't. But that's what this is an image is of. So if I click on that right there, it's going to ask me to save it. And, of course, we go to a what? Our desktop is where our folder is at, right? And we're going to go down to the my folder. And I'm going to save it in there. Right now it says capture. I might put a name on it. I'm going to call it West Valley uh, Web Site. Now, I tend not to use spaces when I'm naming stuff okay now spaces are used today and, and it's it's okay to use a space when you're naming something but back in the old days spaces were bad back in the DOS days spaces were bad so I got used to using what we call the underscore if you look there I type in West Valley and, and I hold the shift minus right it's an underscore and then I put something in there now notice also it's a little different format look at this one this one's called PNG PNG Okay, so do I need to put the .png at the end or extension? .png? Not necessarily. If I put it in there, you can also put it on there if you want. Can I change the format? You could. You could go to JPEG if you want. These are the most common ones right here. You got your PNG, you got your GIF, and you got your JPEG. Those are common pixel-based images, right? We talked about pixels before, right? Okay, these are all common, and don't do not do the single file HTML. I don't know what that is. Let's not do that right now. I don't know what that will do. But PNG is fine. You can use the PNG. Let's hit save. Okay, so that is the snipping tool. It's a great way. Now, you don't have to do the whole screen. You can draw a box around whatever you want. If you want, you can go, and a lot of times, I'm going to go back to the Internet. You can close the snipping tool for now. Let's go back to the Internet. 
Uh, let's say that you're on a website that's really hard to, to save something, right? Let's go to um, Yahoo for a moment. Let's go to Yahoo for a moment. On Yahoo, you got a whole bunch of stuff going on. You got things like this going on. You got that going on. You want to save just a story or something like that, right? You want to save a story or something. You can actually just use the snipping tool. I'm going to click the snipping tool again. And I can draw a box around whatever I want. Let's just say I want this one, the, the whatever Chloe Kardashian's friend is doing something crazy. So we're going to do that. Say you want to send just this. I can save that as an image to see that and save that let's call it what it was this this is Yahoo capture oops capture so you can do even just little parts I use it a lot for just getting examples of things for students to look at I'll just draw a box guys I, I teach a lot of interface design I teach a class next semester called uh, um, interface design and so we look at a lot of interfaces and so I take a lot of screenshots of interfaces and use them as examples in class using the snipping tool. Okay, Yahoo's not the best one to look at. Let's try another one. <coughs> uh, well, let's, let's find another. I want to find a long website. A website that has a lot of data but not Yahoo. What's a long website? Oh, see, um, what's it? Um, what's Microsoft? MSN? MSN.com? Is that Microsoft Network? Yeah, there we go. MSN. There we go. That's a long website. It never stops, does it? Well, it kind of stops. Okay, so the snipping tool is a good tool. Okay, but it doesn't it just saves what you see on the screen what if I wanted to save this entire web page that goes all the way to the bottom as one image see that I want to save this entire website all the way to the bottom as one image how can I do that well instead of using the snipping tool to do that like we just did by drawing a box we can use an add-on to the Firefox browser so I think I talked about add-ons a little bit earlier in class that we talked about you can add capabilities to a program. An add-on is to add capabilities to... Um, so I already have it installed. I do not know if you have it installed. Let's see if you do. What I want you to do in Firefox, find a website that's long like this. <coughs> Go to Tools. And do you see Screen Grab in yours? Do you see Screen Grab in yours? No. No? How about under Web Developer? Do you see Screen Grab in there at all? No? Okay. So let's go and get the... We have to get the Screen Grab. This thing's called Screen Grab right there. It's very useful because you can save the entire website. So let's look at how to add an add-on to my... So what I want you to do is go to Mozilla. Mozilla.org. M-O-Z-I-L-L-A dot O-R-G. Mozilla.org. And let's talk, uh, uh, you know, remember I talked about how I went to uh, uh, Netscape and I put my arm around the big dinosaur, right? Mozilla is, the, that. this is Netscape. Netscape evolved, you know, Netscape kind of went out of business, but they evolved into Mozilla, which is kind of the open foundation, which is these are open source people that want, the, you know, the internet to be free, kind of. And so, <laughs> Mozilla is kind of Netscape the way it used to be and look I'm using an older version I say mm -hmm. and of course look at the way that the the design is today you know of this they got all these uh, you know all these kind of looks to it so we want to look for add-ons so go to where it says Firefox. Firefox. There should be a button that said Firefox. Did you see it? And then there should be add-ons in here. No? Add-ons. 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 Firefox your desktop. Hold on. I have to find it. Let me find the website. Firefox. Add-ons. I guess we should have just searched, shouldn't we have? How about that? 
hold on. I can't I can't find the site. I'm gonna search on Google. And then I'll, f I'll find the site for you. Just give me a second. No. Oh, okay. It's addons.mozilla.org. Let me write that on the board. So go to this website. I'm sorry. Add ons. I think A O N S. Is there an S on there? Add ons. Dot M O Z I L L A. Dot O R G. Add A D D O N S. Dot Mozilla. Dot org. Oh, there was an add-on. There was a link to add-ons on Mozilla.org. Okay. Find this somehow. I don't know how. However, you get to it, type it in, find it. Okay. These are the greatest things ever because they can add capabilities to your browser. Because you want to do a lot of things with your browser, right? You want to send files. You want to copy things. I like it for the screen capture. I also that has ad blockers. You really don't need too many ad blockers with the. Uh, In addition, you can add themes, right? You want your browser to be kind of cool. My browser is pretty ugly right now. It has a blue bar at the top. Maybe you'd like to have a theme. So let, let's let, let's try a theme first, and then we'll do. Let's go through some of these. Let's go through some of these, and and look at the. So did anybody find it? Addons.mozilla.org. If you look, you got extensions. You have themes. You have collection. You have more. Let's go to themes for a moment. I like, kind of like themes. So what themes are is you can change the look of your browser with a theme. So if you want to have a nice kind of butterflies on your flower on your browser, hit add. And it says this site is attempting to install a theme. Say allow. See how it says allow? Ooh, look at the butterflies at the top of my browser now. Isn't that cool? Let's try another one. Um, Maybe you have a theme for a, uh, uh, let's see. Ooh, cheese. Who likes cheese? Cheese, Gromit. What, what is that from? Who's Gromit? Wallace and Gromit? Yeah, cheese, Gromit. Oh, look at the, look at the tiger. Hit allow. Ooh, I got a tiger up there. It's kind of cool. King of the jungle. Themes. Oh, let's film and TV. Maybe you have your favorite TV show. What's my favorite TV show? Oh, I like the mini, um, min, Minions, right? These guys are called Minions. Let's add a Minions in there. Oh, there he is. Minions. Seasonal. <coughs> oh, Snoopy. Look at that one. Oh, that's cool. Okay, so you can add themes. Everybody cool with that? <coughs> so let's let's look at some of the ones. Um, ooh, look at all these. The one I really like to use is called Screen Grab. So let's type in, go to where, there should be a search box there, right? Do you see the search box? Type in screen, S-C-R-E-E-N, grab, G-R-A-B, screen grab. And then hit search. Oh, it's searching in themes. I don't want themes. Hold on. Let's go to add-ons. Let's go back to the main page. Go back. Click on the big add-ons right here. And then type in screen grab. S-C-R-E-E-N-G-R-A-B. Screen grab. So go, go back to the add-ons right here. Make sure you go back to the top level. Top level. And type in screen grab, all one word. And do you see where it says fixed version? Click on that one. That's the one that works. Hmm. And then where it says add to Firefox, do you see that right there? Add to Firefox. And say allow. And then say install. And then restart your browser. So go ahead. I'll come around and help you if you need help with that. Did you see how to do it? Screen grab. And then restart your browser. You should have it in there. And then did you guys get it? Back to the top level. Oh, you, have it. you guys get the screen grab? No? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, 
So I find the screen grab very useful, the fixed version, yeah? The reason why it's useful is because it'll take the entire website and not just, not just a picture of the screen, right? So you can donate if you want. You don't have to donate. You can close this screen. If you got the donation that came up, it's fine. You can close that. So let's say you want to take the entire web page. Like right now, you got the West Valley, right? Remember the first time we took a picture of West Valley? We took, just took a picture of the first top screen, right? I want everything. I want all this stuff down here. I want all this and all this stuff down here. So when you use the screen grab, you go underneath Tools, Screen Grab. You can use Save, Complete Page Frame. Do you see that? You can also do visible portion, which is kind of like the, the, the um, what we just did with the snipping tool, right? That's not useful. We could just use the snipping tool to do that. You can say selection and draw a box if you want. Or you can do complete page right there. That's a very useful one. And then let's put it in our folder, wherever our folder is on our desktop. Let's find our folder. And let's put it in there. West Valley Web Page full with the full page and it look it says it saves as a PNG also remember the PNG format did I tell you what PNG stood for we didn't do that one yet PNGs became very popular format and so let's save that let's look at it first so I've saved that if you want to see what it did if I go to my desktop you'll notice right here look at it it saves the entire web page not just a portion like the screen jam did saves the entire page great useful feature if you want to send an example of like hey I want to send you this web page here's what the entire thing looks like okay called a screen grab very useful very useful now uh, if we go back to the browser for a moment and you go back to add-ons again. What was it? Add-ons.mozilla.org. You know, there's a variety of very useful ones. Uh-oh, did I type it in wrong? Uh-oh, I did. Mozilla. Uh-oh. Got to be very careful what to type in, right? Woof. Never type in something wrong. You get to bad sites all the time. I was teaching at a high school in the 90s. And back in the 90s, there, you know, there was a lot of different um, search engines, right? There was Excite, there was Alta Vista. I don't know if you guys remember the 90s, but there were a bunch of different search engines. There was one called Hotbot, Hotbot, H -O, Hotbot, B O T. I typed in Hotbox one time in, in the high school. Boom! There was a, a naked person on the screen. I was like, oh. so be careful what you type in. Okay, so uh, in, in add-ons, some other ones, the one I use, and we're not going to install this one, but you, the one I use a lot is Fire FTP. Fire FTP, I use that one a lot. Fire FTP, I don't know why it's not working. Oh, it's not available for this version. Whatever, but what Fire FTP, what FTP is, is when you want to send files from one computer to another. FTP stands for File Transfer Protocol. File Transfer Protocol. And this one I use to send from one one computer to the other. We've been using FTP for years. So I've used Fire FTP. Uh, Google Translator for Firefox translates from one language to another. Very useful. Um, let's see the most most users. Let's see the the most highest rated ones. Let's see that one. Firebug. It's for developing websites. We use Firebug, and it allows you to adjust the HTML and adjust the way a web page looks. That way, when you're learning how to do web pages, you can make adjustments right in the browser without having to save the file and re-upload and save and re-upload. It's a lot of work. So Firebug is used in all web development. Again, the translator. Um, I don't know. 
Fire FTP, I like that one. DuckDuckGo is a search engine. Some ways to protect your browser is using firewalls. Ad blocker. You might want an ad blocker. It blocks some, um, you know, ads that are being popped up at you all the time. The downfall of using ad blockers it blocks things that are important, maybe especially our angel. Remember our angel learning environment. We shouldn't use angel with ad blockers. It might blocks things inside of angel. Um, theme font size changer. I don't know what that one is. Uh, ad blocker. So there's a bunch of them. I don't know. You could just search for what you're looking for. What do we want to do with our browser? Save files. Let's see. Oh, probably the most useful one. What am I talking about? Is the um, the one for uh, YouTube. YouTube downloader. Right? You want to watch the videos you find on YouTube. You want to save them on your computer and watch them later. Right? You might find cool music on YouTube and download them. Hey, let's let's add this one in there. Jeez. YouTube download or 4K, I don't know what that means. YouTube download, I can't remember which one I usually use. Um, I don't know which one's better. The one I usually use? Yeah, which like, one's better? The one I usually use is like downbits.net. I don't know if it's going to show up in there, but I use that one. Is it an add on to Firefox? No, it's not. It's oh. actually a website. No. Oh. I've used this one download YouTube videos to MP4s. That's worked. All right, let me see what this one does. YouTube download, note from Mozilla, this add-on has been discontinued. Oof, no wonder. Hey, why do they still have it in the list? Was it YouTube? One-click video downloader. Download YouTube videos as MP4. I've used this one before. This extension that adds direct link to download YouTube videos as MP4 and FLV video. It has a simple interface and it downloads videos directly from YouTube. The extension integrates with YouTube interface and adds a download button below, below the player. That sounds interesting. So, you know, you might need to use a video you find on YouTube. Hey, you download it somehow onto your computer. So you might want to try that one. Download YouTube videos as MP4. Uh, no, no restart needed. Do you guys download things off of YouTube now? Yeah, you guys have something to do that? Okay, good. I don't know. I'm just pointing out. There's a whole bunch of them out there, like you're saying, yeah. Right? So, we live in a digital realm and we like to steal, don't we? Okay, let me pause this video for a moment. Okay, let, let's get some more stuff to put in our folder, right? Now, the YouTube downloader was a great way to download um, YouTube videos and, and save them in our folder and, um, you know, audio files. So let's talk about common formats that we may find on the Internet. So a video format would be most likely an MP4 or something like that. And we haven't learned what MP stands for, but we will. Or you might find an audio file, right? Audio files you find on the Internet are usually MP3s, right? Things like that. So... Probably the, the greatest website ever made is something called archive.org. So let's go there. So have Firefox still open. Go to archive, A-R-C-H-I-V-E dot O-R-G. And this is your homework for today, so make sure you follow along what we're doing today. You're going to turn this in before you leave today. We'll, we use this as your, 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 your assignment for today. And there is some written stuff on Angel about how to do this, but we'll just do it all together right now as a group. Okay, so... In your, your assignment for the first day of class, I usually talk about going to this website and using the Wayback Machine. Okay, What the Wayback Machine is a way of taking a web page and going back in time. What, what archive.org, and let's talk about this for a moment, they've, they've changed their interface this last, this, this last like, couple months ago, but it was a little bit different. But what archive.org was started in the early 90s, mid 90s, and in um, there's a guy in San Francisco who wanted to archive the internet and as the internet evolved over time he wanted to keep track and take all that data and store it somewhere so he developed archive.org and archive.org has been um, archiving the internet ever since and if you want to go visit you can go visit archive.org it's in um, San Francisco there's a as you're driving up 
um, 19th Avenue, right? You go to 19th Avenue and you get to Golden Gate Park, right? And you go into a nice Golden Gate Park and it's all green and stuff. And then you come out the other side and there's a little stretch of buildings between you get to the, before you get to the Golden Gate Bridge, right? You know what I'm talking? Well, between that stretch of buildings, between Golden Gate Park and the Golden and the um, Golden Gate Bridge, is a you know a morose or no get. Getty Street or whatever I'm trying to talk or Gary Street right Gary Street kind of right by Gary Street there's a big white church it's an old uh, church of Christ Scientist church or something like that it's a giant white church that's the headquarters of archive.org and you can just walk in there you can talk to them I'm going to go and actually give them some old software that I have from like the um, late 80s early 90s that I don't think they even have I have it on a piece of tape from my old company I'm going to give it to them and and see if they want it but they've been you know archiving all this great data through years and so what I want you to do for your assignment today is I want you to type in a website and see what it looked like years ago and the one I'm gonna use is Yahoo you don't have to use mine uh, remember we don't we, you don't need to do exactly what I do in class so when I say type in something you don't have to type in what I do I use an example that I use in class but we use the Bob Ross philosophy in this class who's Bob Ross He's a, he's a painter on television, yes. He does happy trees here, happy trees there. You guys never saw him? He's a, he's a wonderful guy. I, when I was growing up in the, in, the, in the 80s and 70s, you know, they used to have him on TV, and I would, he would be on at like 2 o'clock in the afternoon every day, and I would, I would put him on TV, and he has this nice soft voice. And we're going to make a landscape today. And, he paints and he paints and I, he put me to sleep right away you know, within the first five minutes. He was great to take a nap too. But his philosophy is it's your world, you paint it as you see it. I type in, this is your example, you type in what you want is what I'm trying to say. So I'm going to use, right here in the Wayback Machine, I'm going to type in Yahoo. And then I'm going to hit return on the keyboard. So what you're looking at, and you can do any website you want, type in something, anything you want. What you're looking at is archive.org has taken that website and stored it on a specific day. And so let's go back in time, let's go all the way back to like 1997 and see what, see what Yahoo used to look like back then. If I click on 19, I'm going to click on the date right here, 1997. Okay. In 1997, and let's see what it looked like on February 1st. Or let's find it. Is it? We have the same day. We're in June. June. Oh no, June 15th is not on there. Oh, June 14th is. Let's see what it was. This is how, how long ago? 97. This is 2005. This was what? 15 years ago, almost. More than 15 years. 17 years ago. 18 years ago. Let's see what Yahoo looked like 18 years ago. Click on that. That's what it used to look like back there. So in 1997, this is what the Yahoo website used to look like. Uh, the reason why I like to use this as an example is that Yahoo used to be what's called a directory. It wasn't really a search engine. What Yahoo was was a directory. And what a directory was was you would, if somebody made a website and they wanted to be in the Yahoo kind of category directory, you had to submit to Yahoo and somebody, an employee at Yahoo, used to look at your website and put you into a category. So it was actually human powered, what we call human powered. This is before Google, of course. This is a human powered kind of directory. So what I want you to do is find a website. You don't have to use Yahoo. Find a website, go back in time, and I want you to take a screen capture of that, save it, and then you're going to put it on Angel for your homework. So this is your first assignment in this class right now. So go back in time. You already know how to do a screen capture, right? I showed you a couple ways. You can use the snipping tool if you want. You don't have to use the screen grab if you want to. You can use snipping tool. You can click on that and then draw a box. You draw, you draw a box. And then save it then save it and call it Yahoo and put down the date of what you put in there I did what what did I do I did June 14th 1997 so this is your assignment go and do it right now I'll give you a couple minutes go back in time find a website 
get one that's crazy that you haven't seen in a while or something that's popular and go back in time and see what it looked like 15 years ago. So let's go back to the main page, the main yeah, archive.org page. You can just type in archive.org if you want. <coughs> go back to the main page. Okay, so this website is very useful for not just going to the Wayback Machine, right, which they really like the Wayback Machine, but um, a couple things. Uh, if you want, you can read books. Um, it has a lot of historical data on there. Uh, if you become a member or sign up and, and, and get yourself a login account, you'll be able to have access to even more books than you can. You can have access to all the libraries of the world okay um, all the libraries of the world so you can read almost any book that's ever been printed using this okay I use it for I like doing I'm a, I'm a, the way I like to read is I like to read historical things okay and um, one of the ones I found last summer was was back during the Civil War Karl Marx you know the founder of communism whatever he wrote a letter to um, to Abraham Lincoln, Lincoln, during the Civil War, thanking him for f freeing the slaves, and that letter is on there. I read it on there, and it was kind of interesting. So you can find little things like that you can't find anywhere else in the world. And it's just that was just an example, and it, it's a good letter. And Abraham Lincoln made the uh, made the Senate read it on the Senate floor. So Karl Marx's letter to Abraham Lincoln thanking him for freeing the slaves during the Civil War is actually in the records of the Senate. It's on here. Little things like that are there. Okay, let's go down and, and search. So right there where it says universal knowledge, let's go and search. So let's say you're doing a research paper on anything. Uh, how about Edgar Allan Poe? You guys like the Edgar Allan Poe, the poet? You know, wrote short stories, The Raven, things like that. You can type that in. Edgar Allan Poe. Hey, go. Oh, did I spell Edgar wrong? How about Poe? How about we just type in Poe? See, I can't spell it all. There we go. There we go. Poe lost Poe. What do we want? Edgar Allan. How about we type in Allan Poe? Did I spell. What's that? A N here? Uh, yeah. No. What did I spell wrong? E G A R? D? E D? Let's start again. How do I spell? E is an Edward. E? What? D. D. D, is a G. 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 A. A. R. Allen? Like that? Yeah. Okay. Whoosh. There we go. Whew. So, again, on this website, you have so much access to information on here. Um, you have audio, you have text. You have movies, you have concerts, you have data, you have software, and you have web collection. As you scroll down, you'll notice you have different icons. These icons represent different things. This would be music or sound. This is kind of like the iPod icon. If you want a book, you can read a book. So if you wanted the works of Edgar Allan Poe in book format, you can click on that, and it'll show you the book. Now, if you have like an iPad or something like that, you can use the you can use the EPUB. And when you hit the e, oh, there's zero bytes there, so that doesn't look good. When I roll my mouse over, it says zero bytes. So that looks well, that one has data. That one has data. That one has no data. That has data. So let's say you wanted to read this book in PDF format. How about that? So again, find what you want. You can actually read it online if you want, or you can click on it you can download if I click on PDF it'll download it 
open it in Acrobat, and I can actually read it. There's the whole book. Mm -hmm. Let's go back. Go back. You also have all the audio if you want. You want to hear somebody read The Raven? A different take. Oh, that doesn't sound like it. Tales of Terror. I don't know about that one. Uh, Alone. That sounds interesting. So if you find one that's an audio, you can click on that. You can listen to it on right on the internet. Alone by Edgar Allan Poe. Read by Brian Lauder. From childhood's hour I have not been. As others were, I have not seen. As others saw, I could not bring my passions from a common spring. So again, you can find audio. If you want to download it, you want to save that audio on into your folder. The easiest way to save something on this program is to right-click. Again, remember the right-click that we were using before? Here's an MP3 right here. Now, you might see this a lot on there. There's something called VBR. You'll see that a lot when we're dealing with media online. VBR stands for variable bit rate. That's what VBR stands for, variable bit rate. It's a type of compression. Okay, so don't worry about It's an MP3. It just means that uh, what variable bit rate means is that if, if there's something that needs more data, it'll put more data there. If there's something that needs less data, it'll take it away. It's a type of compressing. It really comes down to more, not necessarily audio, but more for video. In that, if I'm trying to compress a movie, right? When you're making a movie, you might have things, action that's going real fast, or action that's just like a talking head going kind of slow. Action going fast, and or just a talking head going slow. And what variable bit rate means is something that's going real fast needs a lot of data, so it'll put more data in that spot. And if somebody's just kind of talking on the computer screen, needs less data. So variable bits, variable compression, needs more data in some areas, less in others. That's sort of what, where the VBR actually comes from. So if I want to save this MP3, you don't need to use the zip. We learned about zip already today in class. Remember that, compressing it? But I can right click on the MP3 and go to where it says save link as. So right click on an MP3, save link as. And when you do that, it'll ask you to save your MP3. This is the MP3. Oh, it says zip. Well, this one's going to be zip too, but it doesn't really matter. You can uncompress it. So um, go to your desktop, go to your folder, and you can save it in there. If it saves as a zip, that's fine. You can uncompress it on your computer so that's one way of doing it let's let's find a video let's find a video oh here's a video Edgar Allan Poe the poet here's a video right here let's see it oh god that doesn't look like a very good video we're not gonna look at that one um, I don't know what do we want poet bust let's see once upon a midnight dreary while I ponder, weak and weary, over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore. While I nodded, nearly napping, suddenly there came a tapping, as of someone gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. To some visitor, I'm... That's pretty cool. I like this video. So if you want to save this video onto your computer, or maybe use it in your research paper or something, or whatever you're doing. You can go down, again, here's the different versions. You got these MP4s, okay? We haven't really talked, I'll teach you about what MP stands for. It stands for Motion Picture Expert Group. Remember JPEG, Joint Picture Expert Group? Remember that? Well, MPEG is very similar. It's called Motion Picture Expert Group. So if you want to save this file, you can right click, save link as, save link as. Find your folder. Hey, it's already gone to my folder and hit save. Now that video will be downloaded and put onto my computer. How do I know it's there? I go to my folder. Let's see. Oh, there it is. It's right there. It's on my folder. I can play it on my computer. There it is. Play through Windows Media Player. Once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered, so. Archive.org has a lot of great audio, a lot of great video, a lot of great books. This is a pretty good projection. I like this.
something more. Ah, distinctly I remember. It was in the bleak December, and each separate dying ember wrought its ghost upon the floor. Eagerly I wished the morrow, vainly I'd sought to borrow from my books. Or okay. So did you see how I saved the video onto my computer? I know you guys are getting tired. I know it's a long day. Just trying to show you things. First day is always even boring. Or hopefully it'll get better tomorrow. We'll see. Okay, let's continue. Back at the archive.org. We'll take a break in a minute. Well, we can take a break now. Um, while we take a break, um, um, we'll take one more break, and then um, you know we're almost done for the day, anyways. I don't remember. Let me look at Angel. I probably didn't follow all the things that I would do in the first day. That's okay. Um, I don't know. Let's see. Oh, my favorite. Um, my favorite is the Cornet films. Um, um, are you popular? That's my favorite. Okay, but these are films of um, made in the in the forties and fifties to teach people how to behave. They're made by Cornet Films. This is not the right one. Where is it? There they are, Cornet. Coronet films. There you go. What makes a good party? Let's let's take a break. We'll watch this one as we take a break, and then we'll come back. <laughs> 